three, two, one. Hi guys, are we live? Are we live? Hey. Are we live? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, 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 we are live. Okay guys, hi guys. Welcome to Utechpia on Amazon Live and YouTube. Uh, thanks for joining us. My name is David, Utechpia, and I have my guest here. His name is Jeremy. Jeremy. He's from Pixel Stabbers. So we have Pixel Stabbers today. Uh, Pixel Stabbers is on Again. YouTube as well. <laughs> Again, yes. Welcome back, Jeremy from Pixel Stabbers. So thank you for having me. Again. Absolutely. So if you want to check out more of Jeremy's videos, which I'm in there too, it's at youtube.com slash pixel stabbers. And over there we talk about photography, tutorials about photography, and Luminar 4 and Photoshop and everything photo related. Mm -hmm. So today I just wanted to make a video about something I saw on Jeremy's Facebook post. And actually, I'll give you guys a quick preview so you see what I'm talking about. Right over yeah, here. What are you talking about? Why you keep exposing me every single day? <laughs> well, because you got something interesting to talk about <laughs> every single day. So here's Jeremy's um, post here. And I guess it's best if we just go <laughs> ahead and read your post. How's that, Jeremy? Is that, is, <laughs> so let's, let's zoom in a little bit here so we can I can't see, see your it anyway. I have a small screen here so I can see it. <laughs> you can see it. All right. So hey, here's I'm Jeremy's thinking. post. So I'll try to read it and I hope I can read it right. You didn't use any hard vocabulary words I can't pronounce. So let's check out, let's check out Jeremy's post here. So four hours ago and it's a pretty big post because you already got like 25 views, uh, likes on it. So. Jeremy, he has said, I've decided to fight this quarantine with positivity and happiness. So I've been digging out some old photos which I used to process them dark and moody. Now using Skylim software, Lumina 4, I reprocess them to a much happier mood. The main thing I did is to replace the original moody sky with a much brighter blue sky using mm -hmm. Lumina 4 AI replacement tool, AI sky replacement tool that is. Oh, yeah, that's my typo. typo, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then played around with the color to balance out the color contrast a little bit. And basically, you went from, a, well, let's see. This is, let's, let's look at some of the photos. So this is the raw original photo. Yep. And then this is how you process it back in what, 2013? 2013. Yeah. And this is like, it, it looks great too, right? But it's, it has some texture and it's kind of moody and it's dark and gloomy. And um, you can see the, the photo that you post today instantly. Like you, <laughs> like the, 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 it's very dramatic. The difference between this, it just gives you a dark moody feel. And this brings so much joy, happiness to my, uh, it just, it just brings happiness and joy when I see this photo. Well, I figure we all need some joy and happiness right now, you know. Exactly. We get, we've been stuck home for too long. It, yes, unfortunately so. And then we can't go outside and take photos because we would be great. it would be great to go out there, Jeremy. We do some live mm -hmm. streams, running around, taking photos with some amazing models, amazing background. Mm -hmm. but, I can't wait till we do that again. Right, but we can't. So the best thing we can do right now is take some of our old photos and retouch them up. And this is a great opportunity to learn Luminar 4, which is an amazing software that can allow you to go from a raw photo like this. You can actually make it look like a dark and moody picture like this with Luminar if you wanted to, but you can mm -hmm. also make it look great like this. And again, Jeremy highlighted what really was the difference that gave us that moodiness or rather the happiness, right? It's, it's basically the sky. The, the sky. The sky and you you have like a little sun flare back there too, right? Yeah, that's also added with um, Luminar. Yeah, so the, the funny thing is, is that's why Luminar's AI sky replacement is so popular because replacing the sky really completely transforms the image. It's one of the most important factor when you look at the image right away. It's what mm -hmm. pops out and gives it so much character, so much wow, so much pop, right? <laughs> this is also proof of another thing. You would never mm -hmm. guess what I shot this picture with. <laughs> hmm. Are you, are, you, are you asking lens or are you asking camera? Camera. Lens doesn't matter. Lens from the technology doesn't really change that much. Well, 
the depth of field is pretty big. So it's probably a small sensor or you probably stop down quite a bit. I mean, when you shoot outside, any camera can do this kind of photo, right? True. Uh, there's nothing special about this in terms of like technology that you can't do uh, with a cell phone or even a crop sensor camera. So I would say- It's a you... crop sensor, I could give you the hit. <laughs> okay, so it's a crop sensor. Not full of Back in 2013, maybe one of the old uh, Canon 5D or maybe Canon 50D. I never 50D. touched a Canon in my life, I told you that. <laughs> okay, so equivalent to that, maybe like a D700 maybe? Nikon? That's a full frame, man. <laughs> I don't know Nikon, man. I don't know Nikon. <laughs> it's a All D300 right. S, I think. D300. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of equivalent to like maybe a Canon 40D for our Canon viewers. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know Canon either. <laughs> and, and that kind of illustrates a point that you don't need the best equipment to take amazing photos like this. You just need to know how to use the equipment. You just have to have the... Two things I would say, I mean, mm -hmm. people might disagree with me is that taste and creativity. Mm -hmm. You need to know how far you go with your creations. Yes. And also, you got to know how, when to stop. That is the taste because, you know, let's say you're pushing the colors. Mm -hmm. You got to know when to stop. That's your mm -hmm. taste level. Yes. So you need those two things. And right. then you have a really good software to help you out. And you could do a whole lot of creations <laughs> in post-processing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Very, very much so true. Yeah, so this photo here just looks amazing. Let's kind of step back a little bit and talk about the technology that we use. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we, we talked about like cameras is not so important as long as you have any camera. But with our current technology right now, we have a bunch of cameras listed down below. And you can even use a cell phone for the matter of that. The line of cameras and lenses that we have below is modern, to media, medium quality stuff, right? Those Fuji X-T3 and all those lenses, would you say, Jeremy? They're, they're good enough for amateur, but they're definitely good enough for professional too, right? I would say they're good enough for anything. Yeah, so exactly. So those are, those are a good, um, some good equipment for you guys to look at. But the most important piece of software here that we're gonna be using is really Luminar 4. If you guys don't know what Luminar 4 is, go ahead and go to skylum.com and check out their website. Uh, I'll show a demo video and I just, I'm always blown away by what it can do. And this software, mm. link down below, is under a hundred bucks. So right now it's, it's using AI. Yeah, yeah, Jeremy? It's a one-time free. Yes. You pay, you pay that price and you own the software. You don't have to pay subscription like any other softwares. Yes. Yeah, and you can see what it's doing right now. It's using AI technology to manipulate a portrait, for example. It's using AI technology to put a light ray behind all these leaves. And you have all these different looks that you can apply, different looks. And mm -hmm. you have a before and after, very dramatic, very quick changes. It has a lot of power and you control all the power with just simple sliders. One of the things that really set it apart is the AI technology. Um, I mean, we, we should watch that one more time just to really illustrate the point because one of the things that makes it so possible is like, for example, you put this moon back there, but there's no masking. You don't have to spend time masking oh, no. things out. You can change the sky, but you don't have to spend time masking out the, the sky. Everything's automatic. You use these sliders to change the way the lips look, the eyes look, the defects in the sky, but you're not masking any of those things. It's, it's all automatic. That's what AI does. So Skylum <coughs> Luminar 4 is amazing. And that's one of the main reasons why Jeremy is able to quickly change form a moody, dark photo into something that's happy and bright and full of life in just a small amount of time. And you can too if you buy something like Luminar 4. And it's I really, mean, really inexpensive. Even though I can't, even though I am stuck at home a lot of yeah. time, yeah. I still not do it manually. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I had the Numina 4, I know that I could do it quick. That's why I like, okay, let's try this. Exactly. <laughs> why? Quit, like, why? Really, uh, I don't know. I, I might have second thought to it about this project. <laughs> right, right. Why? Because like, why would you want to do it manually? Because if you do it manually, you're spending a lot of time doing grunt work, right? Really, it's like pick like you're, you're kind of like pixeling out what part is the sky to change the sky. And that probably takes like a good hour or two if you get like a complicated photo. Yeah, probably. Just, yeah. just the skies. Yeah. 
Whereas right now, you can open the photo and instantly click on the button, change the sky, which I'm sure you're gonna demonstrate for us, right? So you can yep. show the effect right on camera so we can see how you did it. Uh, before we get into that, um, the, the, the software Luminar 4 works as a standalone. It's a photo editor and a browser with full support for RAW as well as JPEG. So any kind of RAW that comes out, any modern camera, it can handle. But you can also use it as a plugin, which works for Adobe Photoshop, uh, Adobe Lightroom, and other Apple products too. And so however you want to use it, uh, this one price, one single time purchase, includes all of it as a standalone or as a plugin. Um, Luminar 4 has all these features here and you know the sky replacement is one of the features that we're going to illustrate today. So I'll show you another mm, video. Key features. Yeah, it's, it is an amazing feature. Again, you can see these results in seconds without any masking or anything like that. And it does such an amazing job going through like all the small areas of like trees and different objects in the shot. So maybe that's enough talk. Let's actually see you do it, right? Sure thing. So again, let's let's go back to this, this post here that you you created. And this is the original raw image you took back in 2013. So we're mm -hmm. gonna probably start with your raw image, right? Yeah, I mean, there's no point going back to the 2013 image. Right. So but, it goes straight to raw. <laughs> yeah, but you can see, like, if you wanted to, you can process this type of image now with Luminar in a well, much Well, you see how that time, went right? in the raw image? It was a, kind of like a like, groomy sky. It's kind yeah. of foggy. Yeah. Uh, see, that's how <laughs> Paris look all the time. <laughs> you so, don't see that blue sky with the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> so this is almost like an impossible shot, right? Oh, it, just, it will happen. It will yeah. happen. It just one's in the blue moon. It's kind of like how... You know, Golden Gate Bridge have that type of sky as well. Yes. You know, one's in a blue one. And <laughs> Same those are, thing with the Eiffel Tower, man. Right. And it, the thing is, it happens so rarely, but when it happens, it's so amazing. And people, in their mind, when they go to these locations, that's the shot they want. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you have that kind of sky in Paris, everybody went out. Everybody go out. <laughs> yeah. They would go out and take a picture of the Eiffel Tower because you hardly ever see that. Yeah. But, uh, this is like a pre-wedding photo shoot, so we only yes. go there for like one day. Yes. Uh, we have no choice. It is yeah. what it is. You better so, get it, right? <laughs> and then we talk about like 2013, so yes. our wasn't really that good. I mean, you know, we still learn. <laughs> so I can only do so much with it. I mean, I never thought about replacing the sky mm -hmm. uh, for one, because I'm not just doing one picture. I have yes. a whole set of pictures to deal with. I'm not going to replace the, If I replace one picture mm -hmm. uh, uh, within a set, I have to replace everyone because, yeah. you know, they would ask, like, how come that one is like a blue right. sky, the others are not, right? So I wouldn't do that. But now that it is like, well, how many years now? Like seven, yeah, seven, seven years, years, years later? Yeah, so seven years. That's think a long time. I don't um, where we can care anymore. So I just, you know, well, that's, this is one of the good pictures I took for, um, mm -hmm. I, was, I really like this composition because mm -hmm. not many people do this kind of, this type of um, composition for once. Back then, when we start when going to Paris, it's mm -hmm. not that many people there. So mm -hmm. it's people allow me something like this. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there's way too many people, and it's actually a block. You can't even go in there anymore. If you could look wow. at the lower corner, yes, they have those uh, wall block stuff in there. It's actually kind of oh. block. We can't sneak in a little bit just to yeah. get in that corner. Fair, so it would, yeah. be, they would be like white under the Eiffel Tower. That was the vision mm. for the pictures. Uh, mm. You can't even do this anymore because it's all block. You yeah. can't even go in. You can't do this picture unless you have some kind of authority that you go in. Yeah. So it's one of those that like, you can't do picture, that kind of picture again. So yes. it, it meant something to me. Yeah, and it's something that, you know, it, it, it's just impossible right now because time has changed, things have changed. In fact, right now with our current uh, health uh, epidemic situation, you can't even go to these places like that. Yeah, you probably no. could, but it's probably blocked out quite a bit. And it's always blocked out. You, you have to wear a mask if you're out in public or whatnot. So it's it's... Things change. So when you go back and look at a picture from 2013, there's some specialness to it that you can't even have today that makes it even more precious, more valuable. And then you bring back even more wow to it by adding the, the effects that Luminar 4 can do. So it's pretty cool. Yep. I like it. So are you ready to uh, share your screen and show us the magic, how all that happens? Yes. Let's get rolling. All right. Let's give it a shot. Do this. All right, so I see your screen, and so, I see a 
raw photo, which to your credibility looks pretty good. The composition looks great, and you did what you can do given the sky that day, right? It is what it is. <laughs> it is, yeah. I mean, your client wants a beautiful sky, but it, you, 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 you can, can you can do you, you can do whatever you, get, you want. You can lower the lower the that's it. Yeah, there's nothing on sky. <laughs> that's no. pretty much it. I mean, back in the day, if you really want to make this photo great, you would have to crop out the heck out of it. And you look at all the spots in the tower. You see all the the, the little areas right between these little things. Yeah, like yeah. How, how long would it take you to mask all that out to change the sky, especially if you want something like a sunset orange or a blue sky or change it to a night sky, right? That would be very, very difficult. Very difficult. Right, and it would take tons of time. But here, you're really going to change the sky in a matter of a few clicks. And that's the... Uh, I'm going to change something time. down here first. Okay. I don't, like, I don't like it. Yes. So again, so, stuff like this, this is using Photoshop, right? But um, could you also have done this in uh, Luminar? Or this is kind of like, you need to have a little Photoshop. Uh, you can, but I just get so used to Photoshop, just do this. Ah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you know what? No, no, I don't want to do that yet. What am I thinking? I need to duplicate that and. Dung, dung, dung. <laughs> so basically, I want to remove this. I yep. don't like seeing this. So I'm going to edit. Fill, Delete. Content where? Yeah, it's it? al almost good. Yeah, why do you think I have this? <laughs> yeah, I need some lines. So this is like. This is Jeremy doing what he does for money because this is this is what he does as your, your business, right? Taking pre-wedding pictures and delivering fine art quality pictures, not just out of yep. camera, but making them perfect. So there you go. You got to combine Photoshop with the power of Luminar for like the super ultimate flexibility. But if you're starting out and you want to get into this world of digital photography and post-process editing, you really don't need Photoshop. You can definitely use a standalone Luminar 4, link down below, and you can get so much out of it. And the, the software is under 100 bucks. It's cheaper than any lens you can buy, but it will take your photography to 10 times the, the level it's at right now if you're not replacing sky. Changing the sky, like we saw earlier, makes a dramatic effect, an amazing effect. So what, what are you doing right here, Jeremy? Just I'm just mm -hmm. fine-tuning all the... Mm -hmm. What the hell? Oh, never mind. You're using some mask here? Yeah, just kind of make it look more mm -hmm. believable. See? It looks great. Yes. There. Amazing. Little stuff so like I'm that makes... Just merge all that so yep. that will save me some cash. And yep. not, not money cash, but you know, the memory cash. Yes. Okay, so, okay. Now I am happy. <laughs> You're not okay. happy yet because that picture still looks gloomy. No, but at least I don't have to deal with that. All right, okay, so I am going to go into Numenor right now. Yep. Under the SketchUp software, Numenor yes. 4, which is how I use it yep. most of the time in Photoshop. So right now you're pulling it up as a plugin. Yep. So it's going to be working on that layer that you just made a copy of, right? It is. Okay, let's see. Oh, how do I get that out there? Well, I'll deal with that later. No, yeah, what, what is that? <laughs> You know what? I want to deal with that now. What did what, I do? What is that? Where did that come from? I want to know too. It's not there. Not here. Interesting. Let's open it one more time. Yeah. It probably won't show up. It's probably the screen sharing bug. Yeah. Let me tell you that right bug. now. <laughs> so if you look at this, it's not a software. <laughs> it's the screen sharing. It, yeah. Yeah, it has it's, to be a screen it's, sharing. It's, yeah, it's something weird with the, the Skype that we're using. Okay, right, anyway. Yep, yeah, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go use my trusty little mouse. Uh huh. Because I don't need a pan in here. All right, okay. so also, uh, you're, you're gonna be using the tablet too, right? Yeah, I, I was just using the tablet when I. Um, let's take a look at the tablet it, uh, real quick to see which tablet you have. I have. Uh, I don't want to bring it up. So oh, it's connected. See it? Yep, okay. Welcome. So, 
That Back tablet is also in the link down below too. It's pretty inexpensive one. It's one of these things that we always tell our viewers and we're sure Wacom won't, won't, doesn't like it too much, but you just need the basic one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jeremy's already working some magic. Let's, let's see what you're doing right here. Technically, it is not my magic. It is <laughs> Numina Falls magic. Ah, look at that. Uh, it like masked out the, the structure the in no time. Wow. Actually, that one, that one's more believable, honestly. Yeah, it is. Because but it, then those are more dramatic. <laughs> that looks okay, nice this one's too. good. Yeah. Okay. Um, can can we look at like uh like a more dramatic sky just to see if it really replaces all that area? Yeah, like the areas right behind the the tower, like these little areas. It really the software really masked it out. I'm so dude. Impressed. That is dramatic. I like this one. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty awesome. And like literally you brought the picture into the software and you just selected the sky. You didn't have to mask out anything. You didn't no, need to tell the software all. anything. That's so cool. Ooh. Wow. And what really blows my mind is that the, the software knows to go around the structure. And go into this little area. I'm just there. scrolling through every single sky and make sure yeah. like all of them work. And yeah. so far, every single one of them works perfectly. Right. I would say there's a little fine tuning you might have to do. Oh yeah, some of those, yes. Because yeah, I just see a little online. halo around the Paris Tower. Yeah. But for like a first tap, a first one click drop down, and it has this kind of result, is amazing. And the fact that it loads really fast too. Um, Given the fact that your computer is like seven years old, right, Jeremy? Again, it's... you're gonna bring that up again, seriously? Of course, <laughs> of course. That makes this software even more valuable because you're using an old computer that's seven years old, but you can still render amazingly fast results with Luminar 4. Uh -huh. If it's not for the couple up front, which is daylight, it yeah. work. I like this oh, one. Oh, that one, this one's pretty good. This one has a good kind of the gradient of orange and blue. It's so much better than the original photo. So much better. But not as dramatic. Yeah, but it's more believable. Whoa! I don't know. I want, I want clouds. Then they this all one, look nice. Now this one looks really like Paris because Paris, when Paris sunset, it really had this like purple uh, mm -hmm. algebraic color. So. Yep. That looks and believable. Remember, our goal is happiness. We want something happy. So that's why I need something blue, blue, blue. Yes. Color actually plays a big factor in terms of mood, right? Oh, yeah. Totally. Uh, no. But like you can also change like the size and position of the sky too, or flip it around as well, right? Yeah, I can. Uh, no, not that one. <laughs> Let's see. The, one of the things is that you just have too much control here that you spend a lot of time just playing around with yes. it. <laughs> and uh, oh, about that. And one. The, these guys that you're selecting from, they're all included with Luminar Four, right? None of these are the ones you added. Yeah, this is all included. This is all included. So you could just look at it like you have all this. Okay. And then you could basically rather either go to the marketplace uh -huh. in the software, mm -hmm. or just go here and download new sky image mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. you, you would link directly to the website. Or if you have, let's say, let's say, see this one this is my own pictures that ah. I loaded before. Yes. So they know. Oh, I saved it. Save. Wow. I mean, one, I one great sky that I could think of, either you purchase a Paris sky or you actually end up going there on one amazing day and you just take a picture of your sky and save it as a Paris sky. And then if you use it with any of your Paris photo, it actually is the most believable because it actually came from Paris. You can say that's the Paris sky. It just happens oh, yeah. to not be that day that you took the photo. Okay. For I think I'm going to use this one. Yep. I'm going to use this one. Mm -hmm. And I don't see much fixing that I need. I see a little bit of halo around the tower. Do you see it? Just a slight light halo. Ooh, that, that made the tower a little bit more sharper. Oh, it goes, oh, 
I see what you're doing right now. That's like it goes between the the, the little uh, space between the. Yeah, tower. I'm fine tuning it. It's just. Yep. Wow, look at the details that it goes through. Like, if you were to, to, to mask all that yourself, there oh you my go. gosh. That looks pretty good. That is um, so amazing. I'm going to keep it a little warm here. Mm -hmm. And sky exposure a little bright, maybe. How's that look? That's good. That looks pretty good. Um, you kind of see that the contrast of the Alpha Tower is not matching the sky, so... Mm -hmm. I'm going to Essential and going to my light. Mm -hmm. You know what? Before I go to light, let's go to AI and enhance. Use AI Ascend and see what AI is thinking. Oh, it needs okay, more that, contrast that, in the sky. Yeah, it did. It, it did. That looks amazing. It balances yeah, the contrast good. because, like you said, the couple is very contrasty, mm -hmm. and the sky wasn't as contrasty. So you had um, kind of a mismatch in the amount of contrast in the photo. The blue is a bit much, so let's see. Mm -hmm. Drop it down just a tack. Not that much. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, see, what else do I need? You know what? Let's do a little bit more here. I'm going this area and. Mm -hmm. I probably don't want this small detail because I know it's going to affect, yeah, it will affect the skin tone. So, no. I would do medium details. See how it, mm. all the stuff just got sharpened. Yes. Like, what was the result when you changed the small details? I didn't quite see that. You look at their skins, you see some oh. aspects that are showing up on the skin. So, yes. no, I don't want that. I see. So, just yeah, a little here, there. Mm hmm. Okay. I always zoom back out and see the overall picture, make sure like what I did, and then go before and after and see how yep. far I actually did this. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm gonna play around with something. <laughs> okay, done that. Let's let's add a sun and see how that works. Oh yeah, that's right because you actually add sun. Sun, why behind the cloud? Where? Right there. You don't see it. No, it's a sun ray. Just wait. Ooh. Whoa. Wow. I I actually never played with this tool before. I mean, I saw it in the demo like all the time, but I never actually got a chance to play with it. It's actually really good. Because it's not like a sun ray that you normally it, it's it's a sun ray that's smart because it knows what part of the cloud it should shoot through. Right, it actually does all the calculation. Uh huh. That's really good. Yeah, you can control it. All the randomness this of it, yeah. So I probably want more. Uh, you know what? I don't like the placement here. <laughs> Which is more believable? No, no, it's just too low. What do you think? Like right here, maybe? Um. Well, it's it's. Yeah, it, it looks like a noon type of lighting, or maybe like two or three p.m. <clears throat> all the way up here. Yeah, like mid 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 noon. All right here. Mm-hmm. So, so this way, because if you, you can notice, if I add this, yep. If all, right now the whole sky looks even, yes. You know, mm -hmm. like eh, it's kind of boring. Right. But if I add that, it kind of the contrast of the brightness. It's kind of shifted to the <clears throat> right side, and yep. then it makes it more interesting. And also, oh, you yeah. see how it applies onto Eiffel Tower as well, too. Yes. So whenever you replace something, and then mm -hmm. you uh, apply a global lighting that mm -hmm. apply both the new replaced guys and uh, also the original mm -hmm. objects or the subject within, it makes the picture looks way more believable. Oh yeah, yeah, that looks great. So, and the sun way lane because it's sun, so I had to determine by here right now. I need to look at. The couple and on the bottom too, because you know the sun can't be that strong because that doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> right, right. So Moderation just kinda, is the key here. Kind of slightly just kissing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the light itself is kissing the Eiffel Tower just attack. Mm -hmm. That should be good. And the overall look, I want a bit of brighter. Because mm -hmm. I want to be happy, right? Yes. 
Absolutely. That's why we're doing this. That's why we're taking a seven-year-old photo that you originally processed in a dark, moody feel, and you're making it happy and joyous to just bring more okay. happiness to your day, right? I think that's good. That looks good. Right yeah, there. that looks nice. That looks nice. All right. Um, what else should I do with this? Oh, I know. Let's go to Pro. Mm -hmm. um, let's try to contrast. Let's say highlight. What does highlight contrast do to this picture? Mm, it changes uh, the, the, the contrast of the highlights. Like that. Yeah, and just, just, I love how you're just moving sliders. You, you're not spending any time doing grunt work. You're actually making artistic changes yeah. immediately. I certain chill basically do certain things and I just make sure like how much I want it and Ooh. do I need it. Yes. Well, that's also sometimes you, you use the AI to kind of give you a, a feel. You, for you see what how it after that little tuning on the contrast on the mid tuning shadow, yep. it, it kind of balance out the pictures. Mm -hmm. it, right now, it's just, you know, it's kind of a little bit disconnected, right? Mm. Because of the contrast differences of mm -hmm. the sky, the Eiffel Tower and the couple in the foreground. Mm -hmm. The ones that did that it's kind of more linked together now. I feel like the global lighting, the yes. global contrast is uh, more matchy matchy. Yes. So like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to do one more thing. Let's see what's colors. I want to see if I could do this here so I could do more here than less in Photoshop. I mean, mm -hmm. I could always go out. And fix it, right. That's less. the beauty of using it as a plugin because you can go back in Photoshop. Yeah, I know the orange is too much there. You can mm -hmm. see. Until it basically got more normal now, mm -hmm. rather than. Yeah, the results cool. are so instantaneous. Like you don't have to wait. You just click and you see the results right away. That's yeah, actually satisfying. You know, I read some of the comments on your Facebook post, and people say that they're having so much fun with this, just like you are. I know. Yeah, it, literally for like under a hundred dollars, the software is not only amazing, but it's like a toy too for any photographer to play around with their photos. Oh, let's just... play a lot of this and see how that works. Yeah. Dehaze. Dehaze. And no, I'm trying to keep the sky not as dark because I want mm -hmm. something more brighter. Yes, we're going for and a it's... joyous I don't need, happiness. I don't need golden hour because it's not golden hour. Oh, it's the high noon. <laughs> and this is the sucky part. The greens, do I need to enhance the green? It's up to you. That's like a uh... personal preference. You know what? I'll see if I could change the color of the green just a tech, but mm -hmm. not a lot. I'll just put two there and then do much. I'll do six. So those sliders and... work together in tandem? So if I turn the green, ah, you see how that's a foliage hue. And then that's the foliage enhancer. Okay. So they match, they go together. Pretty cool. Okay. Because I want to get those three a little bit brighter because mm -hmm. that if I have sun, you know, the color will be brighter. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people doesn't like green, but you know, it's there. It's personal preference. I think green looks fine. I the think guy's it's... jacket is actually red, so I'm going to do a little bit red and hence mm -hmm. so that he pops. Mm -hmm. uh, I might want the minus more to do the blue looks kind of too much still. Mm -hmm. How is that? It's looking pretty darn good. That that's like too bright. Yeah, it's a match of foreground. This that looks, looks more really big, right. Yeah, it, it's it's very seamless between all the components, the sky, the structure, the people. It just flows better. You know the cool thing about this? There's like no step. You could go back and forth, go here, go that way, and only and play around. You know, do all right. Do your thing. That's, that's what they call non-destructive, right? Because each effect that you're applying is actually a layer that you're adding on top. So you can go back and undo one layer of effect, but you, it doesn't, you don't need to undo actually, the no. other ones. So, so this is a little thing that most people don't know about, mm. no matter is that it doesn't matter what you do here. Okay, all this, you don't know, see how many tools they have? Yes. All this, every single filters, mm -hmm. it basically go back to the, your original pictures. Uh -huh. Which is your background pictures? Yes. Uh, the data to apply that. Let's say, for example, if I enhance um, the saturations yes. of the picture, right? Yes. So the red, supposing the red here, let's yes. just give a make a number, maybe like twenty. Yes. And I boost the red to sixty. Yes. With, with one of the filters, right? Uh, yes. Which is color or somewhere. Mm. Where there? Okay, puts it. But if I go to an other 
filter that will affect the colors,、mm-hmm. it doesn't work with your 60 saturation color. It, it goes back to work with your 20. Yes. So you would never go overboard with all these、oh, filters. Oh yes, that that's actually nice. So this is huge different. If you've ever heard of the other、um, photo filter called、uh, Next Softwares? I haven't. Next Softwares, I think Google bought them. Ah, okay. So they basically for that they、mm-hmm. stacks. I don't know if they changed it yet, but in a good old day they stack. So if you apply HDR, it stack, it stack, and then、yeah. when you end. Hands your saturation bef- after you try to you、um, apply HDR.、Oh. You actually enhance HDR's colors too、Not、much. Only- yeah, that will be too much. Right. So for you know, it won't do that. It goes back to the original. Even though you apply HDR effect, right? Yeah. If you、mm-hmm. want to change more saturation, it'll go back to the original. Change that and kind of superimpose that with the HDR layer that you have exactly. in addition. Exactly. Very cool. Actually, that's a subtle difference that actually makes a. Makes a very big. It's the understanding. It helps a lot. It's very so cool. So to, to a lot of like normal users, if、yeah. they just go one click here, filter, filter, and、right. you know, it doesn't really affect them. But if, as you know, I think in the last week we talk about they have filters. Yes. If you want to add more filters and do more in it,、mm-hmm. and that feature, which every single filter adjustment go back to original, plays、yes. a big part. Yes. That way, because you can always add, and you will never go overboard. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and that makes it easier to work with, and it's great for newbies or someone that's starting out to just、mm-hmm. be able to know their limits because the limits here are very tasteful limits. You you really can't go wrong unless you you're at the very extreme of the bars, and <laughs> just don't go to the extremes of any bars, and you should be good. One of my favorite is、yeah. actually the matte look.、Um, matte look, okay. It's like a texturized look, or what? What does it do? No, it's kind of make the picture matte. See? Ah, yes. <laughs>、like、so the shot of the black become matte black rather、mm. than shiny black. Ah, yes. It's kind of like an oldy vintage、yes. look. Yes.、Mm-hmm. It's very, it's a very、um, relaxing look. It kind of, re-、mm. it's kind、mm-hmm. of relaxing to look at. The the love the way I love this because other program had this matte look too, but、mm-hmm. this one you could actually control the amount how、mm-hmm. much. How much faded? When you say faded, is how much black am I fading away?、Mm-hmm. And then this amount of how much black. If see, you see that? Yes. Black is faded away. If I want that, it could work, but that's not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then also on top of this, you control the contrast.、Mm-hmm. So you can have faded, but still able to control the contrast. So it's pretty fun. You give you like、yep. full control on this. Yeah, you can do so much with just sliders. It's amazing how well thought out the software is. Right, because one thing that Photoshop is one thing that makes Photoshop difficult to use is that it's so powerful. But you actually have to know what you're doing to really squeeze all the power out of it. Here, you're using all the power of Luminar by just going through and sliding a couple of sliders. Like anyone can do that. No offense, but a, a monkey can go down and say, "Oh, this looks good. This looks good. This looks doesn't look good." Right, and go through a list of all that and really use all of its feature without. Knowing anything. Let me see if I can put a lux on it、mm-hmm. and see if that looks good. I need something more, kind of brighten up the picture a bit. So this beijing looks pretty good. Yep. Um, I don't want too many color casts, but that's okay. So, so let's for example, if I pick like cold punch gold. Yep. Color punch gold. Sorry. Color punch cold. Uh, I'm trying to and then color punch hot. Sorry, I'm trying to like get a vision like what this <laughs> in my head. <laughs> yeah. But, then, But anyway, if, if I get that, I can、mm-hmm. always lower it、mm-hmm. and minus the saturation and it's conscious. I still I can adjust. So,、um, it, this Lux thing,、yes. Photoshop has it too. Yes. But the only thing to play with is the capacity, which is the amount.、Mm-hmm. Here in、um, Lumina Four. <laughs> it's been a long day. It's been a long day. Besides the amount of capacity, you can also、yeah. con- control the contrast and saturation. So, so、yeah. it's like way more control than outside. So there's certain things I want to do here rather than in Photoshop. So、mm-hmm. that way I have more control.、Mm-hmm. Um, so you can see that how I could actually get just a tank of those purple in there. Yes. Not a whole lot. Mm-hmm. But it's a up to a personal favorite. You know, you、yes. can put a lot if you want, but <laughs> no, yeah, that's not what I want for this picture. So, 
Uh, it's nice that as you hover over it, you can see a preview right away on your image, full yeah. size. It's not even a thumbnail preview. You actually see right yeah. away. Even though they can't characterize all the looks for you, like yeah. cinematic toning, mm -hmm. creative, class processing, Porsche toning. Don't, okay, I'm sorry, Scanner, but look, don't listen to them. Just find the one that works for you. <laughs> yeah, just exactly. You know, Those let's are just take guidelines. Let's take one quick step back because not a lot of people know what lux mean. Like, do you know what lux are? Can you explain what is a lux and what are you uh, actually doing? Lux was supposed to be for video. You mm. know, if you edit video, you can apply as a color grading. It's more like a color grading. Yes. Um, that applied to the overall global of your video. Like, ah. they actually you could download lux for like, uh, you know, Matrix, yes. the movie. Mm -hmm. um, some movie that have like a color cast on it, mm -hmm. those are looks that apply to the video. Mm -hmm. But then it also works on photos too. Yes. Um, pretty much what Lux is, is actually control. They have a program just to deal with Lux, mm -hmm. but um, you could also create your own Lux in Photoshop mm -hmm. by doing different amount of um, color grading adjustment mm -hmm. and you could actually save it as a Lux. So you could always create your own Lux. So that's why in here, mm -hmm. if you look closely, Mm -hmm. Besides all this, you can mm -hmm. either download or also load your custom Lux. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm working on my own Lux right now. Um, mm -hmm. So eventually, I'll Ooh. let you guys know. Yes. So I might... basically, yep. so basically, Lux is like basically when you have a Lux, it's more like a mapping, right? It remaps colors. So you have your original image, you apply a Lux. So what's orange might not be like a darker orange. What's blue might be now a, a lighter blue, or what's green might be like a teal well, or something. Well, maybe right? this is more easy understanding. You know yeah. how, um, let's break down a photo into two things, the colors okay. and the exposures. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So for example, if I apply a Lux, mm -hmm. let's say I have this color cast, a Lux, apply onto the image. You're right. And I go ahead and we adjust the exposures, mm -hmm. and even though a little bit of white balance, okay? Mm -hmm. Or the contrast that by doing that little thing it won't really mess up the color grading because the lux won't be affected ah uh, yes so you basically break down the color if you are main some people will do the basic and using the exposures and mm -hmm. white balance to do color grading mm -hmm. but now if you want to say that as an actions or preset okay mm -hmm. and you apply that to other picture which as some sometimes some picture might be darker and You're you right. need, need to open exposures that it will break the lux. Yes. And it will, it will break that uh, preset. Effect, yeah, because it's not right. a true lux. So when you have a color yes. tone that you like, yes. you save it as a lux, you apply it to the pictures, and then you still go back to, let's say, it, okay, I think this is a good example. Let's find a really heavy one. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do this and to apply a little bit more here. Yep. If I go to, let's go to light, if I go exposures, you see how I could change exposure, but you see how color tone doesn't really change? Yes. It's retained there, yes. right? That's what I'm talking about. The well, color cap is still there. Yes. Right, that's what I'm talking about. But if your preset is based on exposures and highlight and contrast and, and all that, when you do this kind of adjustment, mm. that preset is gone. That makes sense. And of course, all this stuff that you're doing is like stuff you can do in Photoshop too, but just having it in Luminar 4, it makes it so much easier uh, to oh, yeah. do here, and plus you have some extra sliders that you don't even have in Photoshop, the contrast and the saturation. I mean, uh, unless you're experienced, we really experience with Photoshop, then you know exactly where to go, then yeah, it's no problem for you, you know? Right. But if you're new to this and you want to go try the advanced version of color grading, mm -hmm. this is much easier. Yes. Like, it's only three sliders. Yeah. I mean, if you know how to create your own locks, so be it. If you don't, <laughs> download some new ones or even use their preset one. It's it's fun. Yeah, it's lots of fun. It's quick. You see results right away. It's very satisfying to you play some with of the, the software. Just look at the cinematic ones. Yeah. So some really affect the green a bit more. Mm -hmm. Some affect blue. So they kind of some some kind of focus on certain colors mm -hmm. in a film. So that will enhance or desire certain colors. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Lux is. Basically, mm -hmm. it's all about dealing with the colors. Yep. Um, and if you're adjusting with the exposure, it won't really change much. So that's the whole difference. A lot of people don't quite understand what that is. Used. Thank you for bringing that up. I, I actually didn't understand. Thank you for explaining that. That makes a lot of sense now. So does that make sense to you? Yeah, I mean, it does. Yeah. Very good. Yep. Excellent explanation. 
So this is how I mean. There's a lot of people want want to have um, consistency on their follows, right? Yes. Yeah. This is what this is exactly what you need. Yes. If you just go ahead and get present action, you can get it unless you keep shooting the same way. Yes, you have the, the same Every exposure for all the photos. It and is almost impossible. The, the preset and action you purchase yes. probably work. Yeah. If if not, and you want to try a different thing, and you want to retain that look, right? And look what you need. Yes. And I don't know if I want to apply it now. <laughs> I'm not talking about this much. <laughs> I've been looking at it too long now. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> close my eyes. I'm yes. gonna open it up again and do a do reset. Yeah. Yes. I know that's one I want in there. I just I bypassed it. So <laughs> it's crazy because you can you, 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 just picking the different looks really does have another okay. effect to the I'll photo go. too. Like the sky is side. one thing, but the lux also gives you a nice um, a second secondary level of mood. It adds up to it. It mm-hmm. adds because um, there's two type of contrast. There is, let's see, there's the normal contrast, which is black and white, you know, mm-hmm. not black and white, I mean, the dark and the light. So this is, <laughs> right? Yeah. This this is it. Uh-huh. That's one one of the contrast. Why mm-hmm. is it doesn't work? Uh, oh, it's process, it does, it's process, it does. Processing, processing, it's processing. <laughs> That's your <laughs> seven-year-old computer. Sometimes yeah. it, it, it kind of bogs down, but if you have anything modern, this software is very efficient and it works just I one thing I really like and yeah. I don't see that happening a lot of other mm-hmm. software is if I go to yes color enhancers mm-hmm. see so see how there's a color contrast yes so this is what I'm talking about color contrast so Ooh. if you go just smooth through here yes so if okay let me enhance that a whole lot so you see how the color changes wow that's very it dramatic. wasn't it wasn't just using the black and white the contrast yes. it's using the color amount it's using colors contrast yeah. so you could do a lot with it. now of course it looks hideous because i basically enhanced your amount is very high yeah high. but you see how it's changing the contrast between yes. colors oh well, right yes you very could do a lot effect. of color creating with this like you know Absolutely. adjusting colors so you could do a lot mm-hmm. but um in this case, I don't need it because the color, basically, the contrast is quite balanced here. I don't need to fix it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do you think I need in this picture? I don't know. You've done a lot of things. Like Technically, I was happy with just this, adjusting this. the sky that's and using like, a little AI. Yeah. But that's a lot already, yeah, I think. It, yes. I like the you know, softness that it has. Like the color I don't looks want soft. To I want to solve this. Uh, let me see. Mm-hmm. Let me go out there and turn that off. Mm-hmm. Okay. And go back here. Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit exposures. Mm-hmm. Just stuck in a bit. Increase a little small contrast. I think I could call it done right here. It looks good. Just that. Oh, yeah. So that way, you see how the subject become the most contrast mm-hmm. because if they're small. Mm-hmm. The Eiffel Tower is big. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason they wear like a little bit more colorful clothing. So mm-hmm. that way, you know, um, yes. the sun's right here. Um, should I enhance the sun a bit more? Maybe it I seems. I com- It looks uh, good already. No, that's too much. Yeah. Now, now you're bringing the the focus away from the couple. See, this is what I'm talking about. The taste. Yeah. You know, you gotta know when to stop. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I don't know when to stop. Well, that's when you take right. a break and then you look at it tomorrow morning. And you're like, oh man, I went too much. Oh, it or... happened on. So I'm gonna apply yeah. and call it done. Otherwise, yeah. I don't know how long to stay here. For. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We should we should wrap up in the next ten minutes or so because mm-hmm. th- this is a really good tutorial. But um, I think we got a good overview of what Lumina Four can okay, do. So, ta-da! Yeah. And now you're back in Photoshop and the layers imported, and now you can c- resume your workflow and use Photoshop however you want. But now you have this amazing layer that you just manipulated with to sliders. No masking mm-hmm. was involved. That you. So the only thing slide. I did in Photoshop is basically we moved the whale. Yeah. And everything is done in uh, Numenor. Yes. But you know, if you want to do more here, you can too. So basically, I just open up the histogram, mm-hmm. which is the level, mm-hmm. and you know, there's some missing information in there because I faded some of those, right? And mm-hmm. because of the sun, I added, so it's different now. What mm-hmm. happened if I adjust the histogram? 
a little better. So it created more contrast. More contrast, yeah. But, um, almost uh, too much. Almost too much. Yeah. So I could basically grade point move back a little bit mm -hmm. and change the capacity here to maybe somewhere around 50. Mm -hmm. Just to keep back a little bit of contrast. Actually, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> It, it did. I mean, you got to go in there and you see. Yeah. Yeah. It did something, but yes. I don't think you need it. I mean, it's so, subtle. So here, here, here's our tips, though. Yeah. You see how, okay, let me turn it. When you do lux and, and you do the, the matte filters mm -hmm, that I did, mm -hmm, you know, kind of mm -hmm. make the black kind of faded away, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of screwing around with the histogram. Mm -hmm. If you type that kind of based on histogram to retouch, <laughs> It's then don't because yes. they don't even apply those because yes. it would not you would not get a perfect or like normal histogram when you do that. Yeah, okay. Be because you're changing the way colors are mapped, so your mm -hmm. histogram is all kind of uh, yes, histogram up. only have three, three points the black, yeah. the gray, and the white. Yeah, I like with with Benuner, I was playing the heck out of it, so, yeah, so it was all messed up. I want to say messed up, all like mixed up, mixed mm -hmm. up, so <laughs> right. I would not get this, right? So, if yeah. What what they always want is the picture has like peach like hundred percent black in there somewhere and to be honest I don't have that in this picture. It looks good so the way faded. it is. So faded. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you so, want to have more hundred percent black, that's the extra contrast that we said didn't look good. It didn't suit the picture, because you want something happy and joyous. And if you have too much dark blacks, it does take away the the, the natural relaxing happy mood that this picture currently has. Yeah, I mean, seriously, I mean, the ultimate goal we're trying to mm -hmm. do is from a groomy, mm -hmm. not too happy picture, make mm -hmm. a happy picture. I yeah. think we did it. Yeah. We did it. You absolutely did. Very quick, very fun, and it was effortless. You pretty much just play with some sliders, and you can see the I mean, results Yeah, right I took away. a long time because I was playing around with it and, you know, try this, try that. But, you know, it doesn't really, I mean, you look at it, it's not that hard. No. It's just going to program sliders, play around with it and see if that if that something you like, you do stick with it. If you don't, move on. <laughs> yeah. The results are, they speak for themselves. I mean, mm -hmm. it just looks really great. Like the raw picture you had was just overcast sky. Uh, it looks gloomy. doesn't look very warm. doesn't have the, the so, happiness look to it. So ultimately, the three thing here, um, mm -hmm. Removing that well so yes. the picture looks a bit more, more perfect. Yes. And then go into Numina 4, mm -hmm. replace the sky mm -hmm. so it had color mm -hmm. rather than just room. Yes. Okay. And then add back the sun in there. Yep. Right. And fine tune the contrast and the color just attack, you know, mm -hmm. but not a whole lot right. to match the whole new, brand new colorful scenery. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. It's all done in Numina 4. Yep, except except the the railing, man. That's uh, that's peanuts. Yeah, everything that's, else. That's not yeah, okay. everything else like the the the, the magic is really Lumina Four. It's powerful. I could crop it up if I want, but then I want to see the subjects like a little bit. So I mean, yeah. they're pretty tiny. I don't want to keep cropping. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we should also mention. Remember, there was a little glitch on the left side for some reason. Yeah, that's it's all fine. Not now. here. No, it's yeah. all fine now. So it's definitely like something a, with the screen sharing because I've never seen that, that before when I worked yeah, on Lumina. Yeah, that's nothing Pro. we can't do. We can't do this. Yeah. So don't be picky about it, okay? Please. It, it, it's it's I love it. This is great. Like, where where else can you see the results of before and after, like this? Like. If you show me this picture, the after picture, and you didn't tell me you post process it, I would say, man, you found a great day. And uh, yeah, that's what a lot of people said. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I don't know how you you picked that day, but this is a fairy tale. This is a perfect day. It's very believable. What I'm trying to say. Uh, I'm pretty sure if the couple actually had this picture, they would be super happy. Oh yeah. But they didn't. <laughs> you should you should email the picture and say, hey, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys. Um, you oh, know, they, they are my face. I posted. They probably got it already. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. And you should send them this video too, so they can see how you did this. Oh, I might. Yeah. I just might. <laughs> you should. You should. And then you know they can actually download and use the software too, because Lumina Four it's under hundred bucks. Link down below. It's perfect for amateur or professional use. Like you can literally take this picture, uh, the before picture, on a cell phone, like an iPhone or a Samsung phone, any mobile phone. And you can apply. Oh, I software. highly recommend it because, like, yeah. just two days ago, yeah, I was organizing my baby's uh, pictures. Yeah. Kinda, uh, 
you know, order a photo book for my、mm. wife for my、yeah. birthday.、Uh-huh. And, you know, to be honest, I don't really even use、These、Photoshop or Lightroom. Yeah. I, I use, I use、um, Lumina 4, Lumina 4、yes. and just go over the picture and do some retouching here and there, get some color, get some black and white, and just call it done. It's actually super fast. Yeah. It's, it's easy to use. So if you have family pictures,、yes. uh, uh, you know, just like casual pictures、yes. or one off family pictures, yeah, that's perfect.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you could be、perfect. creative, you know, and then just like this, if、yeah. you go out to Golden Gate, you take some group picture, and the、yeah. sky is not there, we place the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love this. It's it's so simple to use, but it works fine for amateur, it works fine for casual use, it works fine for、mm-hmm. professional、mm-hmm. use, and it looks great. However, you use it, regardless of what、um, camera technique you use or what what、um, equipment you use. Very cool. So I, I guess I want to. Do you want to do anything else before I kind of wrap up? No,、sure. that's my. I don't think I need anything to do with this picture anymore. Stop. <laughs> you know, I would love to go to your Facebook and look at the post and just glance at some of the comments. Is that something that you're okay with? I'm curious to see what other people、uh, responded to your picture. Oh sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, let's, I let's haven't read them all yet. Yeah, I, I haven't read them either. But、um, these are these are all. Real comments.、Ah. So、like, you still share me my screen, right? Not anymore. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. Oh, this、Should、is、I、this、stop? is. Yeah. You, you. So here, look, look at some of the. Oh, they only liked. They didn't comment. Who? This 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 one didn't have comments, but I think. Oh, this other picture you did had a lot of comments. We should save this one、oh. for next time. This one、oh, has nineteen、yeah. comments, right? I, I do similar thing on that one. Basically, change、Oops. like a not too bright sky into a a sunset.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is this is also very similar too, like very、uh, warm and happy. Whereas this is a little bit cold and a little bit gloomier. Yeah, I think I told you one time before that whenever I go out to start、uh, shooting, I never、mm-hmm. got good sky. Yeah. So I always go back. You know, once、uh-huh. I. Play around with Numina Four enough that I、yes. just always go back and do, use the old photo and see what、yeah. would happen if I have like amazing sky with this picture and、yeah. boom. <laughs> and you actually can have amazing sky, just、yep. amazing. Look at that, the raw here and how you post process it one way and now how you post process it with AI sky replacement. Just the raw. I don't know. Some, some of my my friends they've been、amazing. seeing me. I、yeah. um, doing a lot of like, roomy and moody pictures, and then、yeah. when they see you do like bright, colorful pictures, they think, "Wow, I like your old ones better." It's like, well, it's, it's time for me to advance. <laughs> well, like you said right now, right? If you wanted to fight this quarantine and be positive and be happy,、um, just make your picture happy because there's so much of unfortunate events happening right now. You know, know. it's 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 sad to see reality. So sometimes you just want to. Get out of reality, pop into a little virtual reality with Luminar Four, and manipulate the sky so it's a, a perfect world and a perfect day, and just enjoy. I mean, it. to me, photography. I look at a photo is is different. Like a lot、mm-hmm. of people, it's just for memories. But to、mm-hmm. me, because I have so many memories with photo,、mm-hmm. it's not my it's my memory. But、mm-hmm. even though the person in is not me,、mm-hmm. but let's say I'm a, I'm kind of in this dark room right now. But I'm、yeah. looking at this Eiffel Tower blue sky, yeah. so yeah. that helped me, you know, raise my spirit. To be、yes. honest, so、um, when you actually doing a photo, yes, working with them in Luminar Four or Photoshop、yeah. or not, and post、mm-hmm. processing it, it kind of gains something through it. I mean, I can't explain what it is, but、mm-hmm. especially during this kind of time, you can't go out, you can't、yes. go out shooting. Right. So what's the next best thing? Sit there and play around with photos, and see. It's kind of been bad memory because you took、yeah. the photo. Yes. You remember what happened there, so、yeah. it brings back memory. Yeah. It is fun that. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it get you through a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, and, and and it also gets you better. Like when you do something repetitively, when you do something a lot, you will get better at it. So as you have the time now to learn. And practice with Luminar Four and get really good at this stuff. So next time when we actually can go out and take pictures again, you got the skill set down. You know what Luminar is capable of. So you can go out and take a photo, and you know there's a gloomy sky, but you're in your mind you already know what the end result、mm-hmm. is because you understand Luminar. You know the capability of Luminar.、Mm-hmm. So now you can go take your photo outside, 
and all this quarantine time, you've mastered Luminar, you combine that and you got some amazing pictures that take your photography to the next level, takes your business to the next level, takes your customer satisfaction to the next level, impresses your customers, blows their mind out. Blows, just mind blown. <laughs> From your 10 year experience, let me ask you one yeah. thing yeah. before we end this. Sure. Now, if you are, if you, you, as you as you, you're David, I and am you're David. browsing Google, yes. and if you see a picture, you know how the trendy right now is all the pictures were overexposed? Yes. You don't see the skies? Right. And when you see a picture like this has a blue sky crowd, everything looks colorful. Yes. Which type of picture actually attracts you more? Obviously, the one that has a nice sky. It's just, it's gravitating. Mm -hmm. So that's actually I had this video back then is the trend about people overexpose it because mm -hmm. they can't get a white exposure of the sky. They might as well just overexpose it looks bright. <laughs> right. But because of Lumina 4, you could actually replace the sky. Yes. You could get color in there if you like a lot of people don't use flash right away, they don't use yeah. any filters. Yes. And they just get a one exposure. Yes. So that's what they do. But this is one exposure. <laughs> yes. Oh hey, we so, got a comment from uh, Jack Mitchell. So Jack okay, Mitchell Jack. asks, is this a Photoshop tutorial? Uh, Jeremy, why don't you answer that question? It, it is, but it, I'm using the plugin with Numina 4. Mm -hmm. So basically, I think I did 99% of the stuff in Numina yes. 4. <laughs> yeah. Much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, that, it's a that, Numina 4 tutorial, yeah. most likely. <laughs> yeah, and we use it Photoshop as kind of like um, the, 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 the normal workflow to use Luminar 4, but Luminar 4 is a standalone too. If and you want to see a, a Photoshop tutorial, you yes. can go to my um, YouTube channel, yes. Pixel Steppers. Yes. I have a three hour long masterclass about digital photography. Yes. And within it, I have some Photoshop tutorial in it there too. Yes. And uh, so Jack also asks, who are you guys? So let me let Jeremy introduce himself. So Jeremy, who are you? My name is Jeremy. I am a Fuji X photographer as mm -hmm. well as Microsoft sponsored photographers. Mm -hmm. I do photography educations and I mostly do international wedding and portrait photographies. Yeah, and he's been shooting for like 15 years. He does a lot of stuff internationally, like he mentioned, and really amazing work. As you can see, example here, and um, I think on YouTube, you have a, a, um, a little bit of a highlight. So if you ever go to YouTube, you can search for Jeremy Chan um, photography, maybe? No, <laughs> someone else would come no, up. No, you're here. Oh, oh, that's your Skylum, Skylum work. Yeah. Oh, here, but this is the, the video that I wanted to see. Oh, your, okay, um, that actually came out. Yeah. I never searched myself. Of course not. <laughs> But look at this. This is the type of work um, that Jeremy does, Jack. He's uh, he's actually an award-winning WPPI wedding photographer. He'll never admit that and say it because, you know, <laughs> but he is. He's, he does amazing work. And he's a judge too at WPPI. So he knows color, he knows photography, he knows everything that's required to make a perfect photo. And he does make I'm a perfect photo. I'm just giving back to the industry, that's all. Nothing yeah. more. And thank you for you know coming on this live stream and sharing. Jack is very happy. Um, Jer Jack also asked, Jeremy, how has your business been impacted during this time? Oh, it's impacted for sure. Mm. It's impacted for sure. But then I kind of transitioned to do a lot of different things, such like education. So I, do, I still have something going on, just not the shooting part. But hopefully all this will be over soon. And then I wouldn't say it will go to normal, to be honest. But then you will pick up something different. I mean, just keep looking at the bright side. Yeah. We'll be over. Yeah, and I would add to that as well. You know, it's a great opportunity. Things have definitely changed, and they, they change, unfortunately, for the majority of it, for the worst, because it's, you know, we're in lockdown and things are gloomy outside, but you always want to look at the bright side and see what you can do. Like, we are mm -hmm. enhancing our photography skills by learning new stuff with Luminar 4. We're also um, growing our YouTube channel. We're also expanding to teaching others, helping the next generation of photographer. So we are changing our business model. We're doing stuff that will help other people as well as replenish that income that we don't get now because um, I'm getting w weddings are canceled. Um, my mm -hmm. wife and I do a newborn photo shoots and they're getting canceled too. So it's, it's quite difficult. 
Um, but again, Jack, look at it, the bright side. There's the opportunities to learn and get better, and there's tons of things you can do too. Just prepare yourself. That's why like, I'm trying to share more as much as I can. Mm -hmm. So everybody will gain some new skill. And to be honest, we are at a stage that we need to be prepared. So when the, when the whole situation is over, the floodgates open, people just keep coming. And you need to be prepared for that because no one's going to wait for you. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, hey, Jack, uh, follow us on our YouTube channel. Thanks for following us, oh, Jack. Oh, thank you, Jack. Yeah, so we've been, uh, and another question Jack asked, how long have you guys been streaming on here, meaning Amazon Live? I don't know, how long has it been? <laughs> it's not, it hasn't been too long. Uh, maybe like uh, three, three weeks now. Uh, we're trying out the platform. We kind of like mm -hmm. it because we noticed on this platform, there's a lot of people that are just reviewing products, but they're not really photographers. We, mm -hmm. we want to add value to the content on Amazon Live. Uh, Jeremy mm -hmm. has been a photographer for 15 years. I'm also a wedding photographer. I shoot wedding for over 10 years. So between us, we have like 25 years of wedding photography industry and we want to be able to share that and share our knowledge with products, right? So we want to show how to use the products, not just do yeah. like a little review and show these are the features, but mm -hmm. really show that we use it in our professional day in, Yeah, day I think out. me and David's concept is not just about talking about the spec of yeah. the product, but mm -hmm. actually, how, I mean, we only talk about product that we feel right about and we yes. use. Yeah. So, we can share how we use it. So hopefully that will intrigue you to, you know, also try to use the product. Mm -hmm. Not because of the spec looks good or because the brand looks good, but it's actually someone actually use it and I we will share we will share how we use it. Just kind of, kind of like Numina four. This yes. is how we use it. Yeah. And hopefully that you will like it. Yeah, and uh, Jack, thank you for sharing your background too. Uh, because Jack is a, a, a novice in photography, so he's learning. Um, and uh, he's oh. learning photography and you're asking how we stream, right? So the way we're streaming right now is we're using Ecamm Live. It's a Mac only software. Uh, we've also tried OBS and we also tried Wirecast too. I just mm -hmm. found that OBS was a little bit limited. It wasn't as easy to share, uh, to bring in guests. Like right now, Jeremy is a guest on my live stream and he's just connected with Skype. But you can see he's also sharing his screen when he was working with uh, Lumina 4. That's him mm -hmm. on his computer. And I was able to bring all that in uh, using Ecamm Live and it works really well. I was able to do it with OBS and Wirecast, but it just wasn't as friendly. Um, so that's why I use Ecamm Live. And the limitation of Ecamm Live really is that it has to be, you have to be on a Mac, that's all. Um, and it's, it's very affordable too, so it does great. Uh, yeah, and thank you, Jack. Uh, you, he's, he said he'll come back and check us out. Uh, and his question is, when do we stream? Well, we try to stream um, maybe once a day on weekdays. Uh, given the time that we have now, we have a little bit more free time because we're kind of stuck in our home, so we have to <laughs> find ways to connect. Because Jeremy and I, we just love to connect and talk anyway. So if it wasn't for the live stream, we would just call each other or FaceTime each other and just talk oh, about yeah. the same stuff anyway. <laughs> so it's great we that we share with you guys. We and are talking. <laughs> Yeah, and it's really nice that we have your interaction too, Jack. Normally, we talk here and we share our information, but a lot of people it's watch passively. We, need, we want to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, we love, we love your feedback, we love your you. comments. I'll follow us on Facebook, I'll talk, I'll talk to you on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, follow us on Facebook too. We're on Facebook as Pixel Stabbers. We're on YouTube as Pixel Stabbers. Check us out there. Uh, I actually I have a text. desperate back then yeah. a little bit. I just yeah. want to talk to people. Do I sound desperate? No, not at all. <laughs> we, 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 should, we should all get a chance to talk with people more because this social distancing, it oh. really just takes away us as individuals and takes away what human nature brings to us. Yeah. So, hey, uh, Jack, it's nice talking to you and you're taking off. So we want to say good night and thank you again for stopping thank by. You, Jack. Really appreciate you and leaving comments. Really made my day. So I really appreciate right, it. No, Thanks, Jack. Thank you. And um, we'll, we'll try to stream again tomorrow night and hopefully we'll see you again. If not, uh, mm -hmm. you can always check out our recorded views on Amazon Live as well as on YouTube. Yep. All right. So we're going to wrap up this really quick uh, for our viewers. Uh, again, what we talked about today was using Lumina 4. Um, and the best way to, to demonstrate what Lumina 4 is, is this one video. It's, it's amazing because it is AI, which means it's artificial intelligence. And what it does, it does all the masking for you so that you can add and remove objects, add and remove skies, manipulate portraits like the eyes and the nose, the lips, and 
very easily by just moving sliders around. You don't have to worry about masking. Oh, man, anything. I know I forgot what. I was What's supposed that? to add in a rainbow in there. I forgot oh, about that. Oh, you should have added a rainbow. Oh, we'll, well. We'll do that. Actually, you know what? Do you, are you feel like you want to add it? You can add it really quick right now, right? So if I share your screen, you can just probably bring up Lumina 4 as a new layer and just add the rainbow, right? I'm trying that. Do you want to do that? Why not? Let's do it. Let me know when you're ready to share your screen. I'll jump over to your screen. I'm ready. Just share right. it. I'm working on it right now. Oh, you are? Okay. Let me bring up your screen. It's... All right. Make sure you close the Skype window. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yep. All right. So you pretty much took a layer, um, the, the finished layer that we had, yep. as a new layer. You're bringing it back into... Oh, Luminar. man. It might not work because it's too late. Ah. Let me try it. Let me try it. Let me try it. I'll see if it will blend into um, the sky. It kind of works. works. But that's uh, not as good now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it doesn't work. Cause it, I need to keep that um, sky layer yes. there so that it was separated. So right now yeah. it doesn't work. Forget it. Yeah. Yep. Next time, next time. Oh, next yeah. time, next time, next time. No worries. Okay. Let me, let me unshare your screen. There you go. Yeah, so that's Luminar 4. Down below is the link where you can purchase Luminar 4. <laughs> Super affordable software. Highly recommend it. It'll take your photography to the next level. And as you see down in the carousel, we have some other stuff too. Uh, basically, these are cameras and lenses that Jeremy and I use. Um, these are way more camera technology than what Jeremy used to take that picture back in 2013. <laughs> Seven um, years ago, man. Yeah, so technology has went through the roof. There's so much more uh, features, autofocus is better, dynamic range is better. Um, everything about these cameras is better. So you can't go wrong with picking up even an entry level camera these days. But we always like the, the Fujifilm X-T3 series, uh, which mm -hmm. is a very affordable. It's a crop sensor, but it takes amazing pictures. It's got great sensors. Uh, it has a great sensor. It's compact. It's built with some class and it looks, it looks really the part. You can use it looks it for stylish too. Yes, you can use it for consumer, uh, casual shooting or you can use it for a professional. Jeremy does weddings with this camera. It's a crop sensor, but he'll take amazing wedding pictures and the pictures will speak for themselves. Yeah, I'm not the only one this. using this. A lot of people, yeah. a lot of Fuji shooters using this to shoot wedding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really not about the gear. And I'm like on the different side of it. I like gear, so I actually shoot with the 1DX Mark II for weddings and honestly i can't i really can't produce anything that this camera cannot um maybe i can do a little bit faster sport type of shooting if the the bride's like running down the aisle or something but you know that doesn't happen at weddings so no. prop sensor <laughs> has much faster frame rate for than full frame that's true because Be you have less sense less data exactly. to send back right <laughs> so i right. capture more so than you do in a way well, it depends. It depends. My 1DX Mark II has a pretty fast... Uh, you can get more pixels than I do, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, well, it's a whole different discussion. But X-T3 is a great camera. Um, they're coming out soon with the X-T4, which is also a really good camera. Uh, the specs are kind of pretty much out there already. The thing that it adds is uh, in-body image stabilization, and you got a flip-out screen, and a, a upgrades to all the, the features. The nice thing is, as Fujifilm introduced the X-T4, they're not going to take away the X-T3. They're going to sell the X-T3 a long line with X-T4 just because they're different price line and... You if you're picking this camera, I highly recommend get the 16 to 80 millimeter lens. You, you, all you need is that camera at that lens. You don't need anything else. You could capture anything. Ooh. <laughs> 16 to 80. <laughs> yeah, 16 to 80, and that's the crop um, factor, right? So if you that's want... Like 24 to... Wait, hold on. 24 to almost like 110? Yeah. So 1 1.6 times 80, whatever that comes out to be. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it covers a lot of range. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a good kit lens. I love Fujifilm because they're compact. That's not a kit lens, man. <laughs> it's not the kit lens? This no, is the a kit, kit lens. lens. The, eight, the kit 18 lens is 1855. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. 1680 is not a kit lens. I wonder how much this combo costs because there's no price yet. But we'll see. But anyway, 
That's yeah, that's that's a, that's a nice count. And then we got some we, <laughs> we got some yeah we got some lenses here. Uh, Jeremy is I consider him a minimalist because he travels a lot, so he has to keep his equipment uh, backpack or equipment bag light so he can move around. I don't carry a camera bag when I travel. I, ca I carry a normal um, backpack and using small little packing in inside my backpack, so nobody knows it's a camera bag. Very clever. So you can avoid security, you avoid the hassle, you appear as avoid a hobby every day. Yeah. And thieves too. So this is this is um, his minimal set. He has like a 35 1.4 lens. Great for, uh, especially on the crop sensor, it, it becomes like a, a 50 millimeter, so a good normal focal length lens. He's got a wide angle, a 16 1.4. With a crop, it's like a 35 millimeter, more of a wider lens. Uh, but with a shallow depth of field, so you have some amazing um, portrait sessions with it, and really nice um, depth of field, shallow depth of field, I would say, with it. Very cool mm. lens. Um, then he also has a zoom lens because he shoots wedding. You always need a zoom lens when you shoot wedding, unless you're you're moving around a lot. But there are times well, that during a ceremony, I yeah. use that for headshot too. Exactly, and for ceremonies and. Um, receptions where you want to be more of a ninja and stand back a little bit it makes sense to have uh, a zoom lens as one of your arsenal and then he's thinking about getting the 23 millimeter f2 it's not part of his arsenal yet but it's a kind of a nice to have because this is more like a perfect street photography lens <laughs> as well yeah and sometimes you having too much gear takes away also from thinking too because I, I like the fact that if you only have like a 16 millimeter and a 35 millimeter then you kind of you have to plan your shots and you have to strategically put on the right lens. So I, I like the challenge of um, kind of working around the limitation. It actually makes you a better photographer when you're limited to what you can do. So then you become yes. more creative. That's for sure. Um, you always want to have a flash, especially when mm -hmm. you're shooting wedding. Uh, flashes and something like this is more advanced than the typical flash that comes with the Nikon or the Canon uh, that many It's more powerful. Use much more powerful the battery is modular and it's um it holds a lot, a lot of this charging. flash is pretty much like bringing out a studio um stroke out yeah. as a portable lighting so yes pretty amazing yeah and then we got some leds to for a supplementary uh use detail you, shots or close-up portrait shot is it's perfect to use exactly and when you don't need too much power and when you're indoor or outside with low light so it's great for that. And then you also have one that has RGB, which you is change great. colors. Yeah, which is very nice. And then you got a, a professional portrait kit oh, with yeah. extremely high quality LEDs. You can uh, check out our YouTube channel. We talk about the light and motion yeah, portrait kit. Uh, our YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com slash pixel stabbers. But this kit is amazing. With these two lights, you can actually shoot outdoor and combat the sun and have amazing photo and because there are con they are constant light you don't have to worry about sync speed which allows you to shoot um, shallow depth of field outside without big ND filters so pretty pretty amazing stuff that you can use with these lights they're, they're a little bit pricey but they're very robust 30 high quality lights that will bring a lot of value to your photo in fact the small light is actually waterproof uh, down to one meter for half an hour and it's actually shock resistant uh, this one up here is water resistant so pretty really really good lights we won't dig mm -hmm. into that too much today uh, it's always nice to have a reflector and a soft box with you because soft light is always more pleasing uh, the Wacom tab Intuos wireless graphics drawing tablet that Jeremy uses with the pen there uh, because it's pressure sensitive, right? You want to give a quick spiel why you have a pressure sensitive tablet instead of using a mouse to edit photos? I mainly use the pen to um, do masking and the mm -hmm. type of masking I don't do like really sharp edges mm -hmm. masking. I do like kind of brush masking and then mm -hmm. having the pressure on so I could kind of like I'm painting. Mm -hmm. So when I do mask, most of the time I'm not trying to remove stuff. I'm trying to add color into it. So I want to have a gradient yes. mask. Right. But then the gradient mask sometimes it just applied to global. But if I want like a selective wear uh, area and I want a gradient, I have to brush it into it. And having a pen, it makes it much easier. 
Yeah, I love print because pretty much with a pen, it's pressure sensitive. So the mm -hmm. harder you press, you can change the effect of that, whether it's wider. So it's kind of just like a paintbrush, like yeah. an actual paintbrush with paint on it. How yeah. much I apply and how much ink will be onto the paper, which yes. in this case would be the picture. Yes. And if you notice, we, we didn't pick the most expensive one. We picked um, no. pretty much the cheapest one that does the job. I mean, there's probably a cheaper one that's like $50, $60, but that one is not as um, nice as refined. But you can also go crazy and get one that has an LCD screen built into it, like two or $3,000. But mm -hmm. the truth that's is, this one is perfect for Jeremy as a professional wedding photographer shooting for 15 years. And if he uses this day in and day out, you know it does the job. So that's what he recommends. Uh, I use a, a tablet when I get a chance uh, as well. I love the Wacom series. They're great tablets. Um, so it's nice to have a mouse in addition to your ta uh, graphics tablet. There's no particular reason why we have this other than this is what Jeremy uses. That's what I shoot. use. Yeah, so <laughs> we want to share what he uses. And also he has a Surface Book that he uses as well. Um, I travel. Also, yeah, when you travel, because you have a Surface Book and a Surface Pro 6 here. Yeah, uh, one is for working, one yeah. is for teaching. There you go. So it, you get around with these two choices. And then we also want to also include down below the link to the Creative Cloud for uh, Adobe, because that, that includes Lightroom and Photoshop, and for $10 a month, you can't go wrong with that, because <laughs> Luminar is a great um, software as a standalone, or as a plug-in to Lightroom and Photoshop, as well as another software, a couple other software too, but Lightroom is great for when you have a large workflow and you want to do something uh, quick to all those pictures, and Photoshop is when you want to go above and beyond what Luminar can do. But mm -hmm. um, again, if you don't have these two, don't worry, because Luminar is a perfect ground for in between. Um, it's just that once you want to look for more stuff, we always recommend Adobe Creative Plan, which includes Lightroom and Photoshop for 10 bucks a month. You really can't go around with that. So that pretty much wraps up everything we want to talk about Luminar 4, as well as all the stuff that we use to take pictures and how we use Luminar 4 to take our pictures to the next level. Anything you want to add, Jeremy? No, but thank you for you know, listening to us, and uh, I hope that what we share actually help you. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Jeremy, for being on this show and demonstrating and sharing your knowledge. If you want to see more Jeremy, and also more me too, check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pixelsabbers, where we go into in-depth tutorial, much like this one, but we even have mm -hmm. a three-hour masterclass, which we explain posing, um, colors, and environmental, uh, everything about photography from the beginning to the end of it. Um, and if you have questions, you can always ask us. Uh, link down below for pieces. Any comments, we will, we will yes. reply. Yes, we promise. definitely, definitely. <laughs> we, we'll do our best to reply. So we love comments, so share your thoughts with us. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, let us know. We're always there to help. So again, we thank you very much for spending your night with us. Thank you for joining the live stream. And we will catch you guys next time. All right. Take I'll care. See you next Have a great time. night. Adios. Good night. Bye, bye bye. And we are signing out in three, two, one. Adios. Bye.